One more thing. I don't think I've shown this on my YouTube channel yet, but it's the ice tank I picked up off Kijiji again for free. I go in this little rolling thunder contraption that I had. Can you get close up on that? Juju Mufu signed for me. Met him in Hyde Park, picked him up, tried to squat him. He's a big boy. That's my little garage fame there. The uprights, you want to always buy high quality road brand stuff. Make sure you never get caught with imitators online. Make sure you know what you're buying. What's going on everyone? Gavin Peacock here. Welcome to the Garage Gym Tour, updated. Okay, you always gotta give me the cue. 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 Okay, so it's been about two years since I brought the backyard gym setup into the garage. You guys have seen all those old videos, they're linked up in the corner. We're all stuck home on quarantine now, so I just wanna give you a new updated tour of the gym. I'm gonna to try to rip through this as quick as possible, and I'll mention all the items as we go around the gym. Uh, a lot of this stuff I found deals online, so if I can remember what deal I found where, I'll give you guys the insider scoop on that as well. So without further delay, let's get into this gym tour. So I'll be able to show you guys clips of when I was bringing this garage gym inside and all the construction I did. It was very simple. This is like a 1950s garage, it's 16 by 20. So the first four or five feet here, we just kept reserved for the workshop. Always important to have in a garage gym is plenty of dangerous chemicals and paint vapors to breathe in while you're lifting. It just maximizes gains, of course, it's been proven. So we got them all here, all open, ready to rip. Up high here, Kara behind the camera, doing her best to be smooth, and she's doing a pretty good job at it. Got the stereo system, old, all the speakers found from somewhere, but it's a 5.1. Plenty of volume when you need it. No garage gym is complete without a stereo system. And then we got the old auxiliary cables here to the ancient iPod. Load that up with whatever you want and you have all the sound that you'll ever need for the gym. Boom. Inside the barn doors are Kara standing. Concept 2 rower, lethal machine. I don't spend time on bikes or ellipticals or any garbage like that. I hunted for two months on Kijiji and found this for $500. Normally they sell for $2,000 to $1,500 at the most for discount. So super happy on this. Put the time in to do the hunting and jump on the low prices when you see it. Boom. Over here was a donation GHD. It's a Penlay GHD. Um, had some guy bouts come pick it up for $400 and he chickened out. So I decided to keep it and I don't regret that at all. It's amazing. It takes up a lot of space, but with the barn doors, we can slide things in and out come the spring like now and summertime. So uh, this section kind of transforms to whatever you need it to be. So up the center of the gym, 16 feet is plywood lifting deck in the middle. We stained it blue just to be a little different. I put varathane on it, thinking it would keep out the sweat, but we did two layers and it is way too slippery, so it's taken about eight months to get the grit back to have some grip. Over here, these are Home Depot stall mats, four by three, so I just got a bunch of those to fit all the way down the side. Whiteboard, always gotta put your workouts down. We recently just did a uh, Sally Up, Sally Down challenge, so if you guys know what that is or don't, look it up on YouTube, it's awful. Gym clock, up high. If I have any Amazon links for this stuff, I'll put it in the links or the description down below. Cheap clock, tells the time, gets the job done. It's small, but you can see it from anywhere. So it's perfect. Coming down, coming down. Gyro board on the wall. Most people probably won't know what a gyro board is, but it's a balance implement. It was made for snowboarders. It throws in a good curveball to all your training. Um, and I always say, if you're not training balance, you're not training athletics. So gotta have something sneaky like that up on the wall for you. Okay, down against the wall here are my kettlebells and dumbbells. These racks I made myself. I think I took video when I made them back in the day. Fence post, hardwood side mounts, easy peasy. Competition bells, no, no matter what the weight, the size always stays the same, so it's standardized. Down here are some cheaper bells uh, with nice smooth handles. This is a Russian, Russian bell over 100 pounds. So the bigger the bell gets, the thicker the handle. So that's basically like a fat grip, two inch wide. Uh, just makes it for nasty grip training. Uh, so I have an array of those. Moving down just a little bit. Again, another made myself rack. All the old hex steel dumbbells here are almost collecting dust because I picked up these power blocks off Kijiji. I got the up to 70 pound kit for $500. Again, perfect story. Some guys moving out east didn't want to carry them in his car, so I got a super deal. It's about 300 bucks off the full price. These sets here, 15 pounds to 70 pounds in the handle. 
They adjust as you go, so you save yourself a massive amount of room in the gym. Every garage gym should have a selected deck, dumbbell set of some kind. Tiny little baby 15s, if you're starting off, you literally just need these two little baby 15 pounders. If you think you're beyond a 15 pound dumbbell set, let me put you through a workout. That's all you essentially need in some space if you're starting off. Easy peasy, I can crush anyone with 15 pound dumbbells. So this is basically like the warm up prehab rehab shelf, foam rollers, foam grippies when it's freezing cold in the winter time, straps, whatever you need are in here, lacrosse balls, some ankle weights, ab wheel, shackles for inversion hanging. Uh, I'd say that's super underrated. Those are only 40 bucks, I believe. All the foam rollers are different varying densities. And then the uh, barbell glue pit, hip raise pads for Kara when she does her booty program right there. Trap bar on the wall. If you want to get as strong as you can, as fast as you can, got to go into the trap bar. It's probably the safest way to lift the most amount of weight, hands down, in the gym. It takes up a lot of space, so that's why it's away on the wall. Here's a dip bar that goes onto the uprights. 40 pound vest underneath. My strong logs in the corner. I don't know if you guys know I make these myself. Slow and tedious, but they're beautiful pieces of work. So I got a 120 pound log and a 90 pound for care to toss around. Beautiful art collection pieces in the corner. Roll in. Weight plates, always important to own three times the amount of weight you can actually lift in a gym. Just, you know, fill your pins. All steel up here, pretty cheap. Super basic bumper set. You're not doing anything crazy in here. Down here, this little red guy. I just spray painted that red and did white out on the letters to make it look professional. Little secret tips, secret tips. The cage here I have is actually just four uprights connected with pull-up bars. And up high, it's actually just lumber tied into the ceiling of the garage. So nothing special up there. The back wall's got these huge eight foot or seven foot, well, I'm six four. Eight foot high mirrors I saved from a buddy's place when they were doing a demo reno. It just expands the garage. Best illusion to make a little, little place like this seem bigger. Barbells in the corner here. Cutesy little barbell holder. Got it. basically the bars I use, Olympic bar, powerlifting bar. Powerlifting bar's got a center knurl for grip on a back squat. Uh, Olympic bar is gonna have a better bearing for spin. I got a cheap little bar that used to be outside all the time. And then a super sweet safety squat bar in the back for doing beastie Hatfield reverse lunges. Far wall, the accessories wall, down low. I got these little shelf pins for the rack, which just gives you way more expanse on the exercise you're gonna be able to do. Love doing shelf press or squat down to depth. Always important to train with rails if you have them. Bucket of chalk, why not? Some more wraps and straps, dip belt, skipping ropes. We have the Big resistance bands for, we usually use them for warm ups or assistance on the pull up bars. There's one right here. Can you pan over to this? Oh crap, Bruce. Oh, I missed them. I didn't hit them. So you hook these bands in, put your foot through, gives you assistance on pull ups. Nice and easy there. Uh, weightlifting belts for whenever you need them. Uh, exercise mat behind there. 40 or 50, what do we have? 50 pound and a 30 pound slam ball. Awesome. Some bumper plates just holding space on the ground. A few other little trinkety things that we're missing, but that's okay. Got a landmine attachment. So TRX is like 500 exercises in one. Suspension trainer, got a leash here for it. Up on this big beam. This is a two two by tens we had to put up for structural support when I cut the other cross beams out. I bought a hanging pack of grips for rock climbing. So this is just making use of a beam that's there anyway. Work a lot of your grip strength up top. You got some hard balls here on chains for hanging work as well. And then I think I just mentioned the TRX mount, hard mount here, hanging. So it gives you different stations to work with. And last piece of equipment here, adjustable bench, really heavy and sturdy. Got this from Fitness Depot down the road. Most big things I buy from Fitness Depot if I need it quick and heavy. Other accessories you can usually find on Amazon. Like I said before, I'll put links down below if I know there is one. That's basically the setup. You want to come on in through the side door here. Maximum amount of work in the uh, apparatus with minimal amount of space taken up. So I think it works really well. You guys can leave comments down below for any questions and comments you want or questions you want answered with anything in here. 
And I think that's long enough for this video. So until next time, stay fit and have fun, folks. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Side of the garage here is my cold therapy tank for the muscles, mind, and the immune system. You guys haven't heard of Wim Hof yet. Got to look them up. All the athletes are doing it. This stuff's been around forever. I get in this when it's got pieces of ice floating around in it. You know it's cold. I haven't actually had to turn it on um, yet in Toronto because the nice gets so cold, it just keeps the water. I won't get into much detail about it, but it's here, it's nasty. It's always a great thing for me to do. All right, just one more thank you for watching from Tucker, Gavin, Bruce, and Carabine the Lens. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching the videos. Again, if you have any recommendations or questions, put them in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. Stay safe. Yeah. Oh. First important feature to every garage gym should be a garage gym dog. We have two of them here today. You guys will remember him from a million videos on the channel. Tucker's almost into his retirement years, so he's just catching a suntan on the driveway, but he does his job. Bruce is the new recruit both comfortable with the garage gym environment.